wake up, god damn it. Welcome to Market Cast with Unk and Market Monk. Morning, P. How was your week? Oh, I was out sick, so light week for me, but um, I I did notice so a few things that hit off pretty large. Um, Lulu on Friday, AMD the day before, and then um, pretty much was just managing crypto positions I already had, uh, trying to strike while the iron's hot, but, you know, keep some for what I think's on the way. Uh, <laughs> easier to do that in the small caps farm and a couple of those, but uh, yeah, just pretty much had a pretty simple plan, knew I wasn't going to be fully engaged all week, so just sort of stuck to that. Kind of steal it from your uh, our, our pre-meeting coffee, but to stay in, like I said it the last few weeks, I don't feel like too much of a beast, but staying on your, just stay on what you're on, um, yeah. really paid off for me. Um, elephant in the room, we all know, I woke up to a pretty big win on Hawaii, so um, I really, yeah. <laughs> I kind of wanted to, I had to take a little bit of a break, to be honest with you, didn't do much, um, did more selling. I was a seller last week. Um, CLSK, I finally got all out of. Hood, I got all out of. Uh, Play, I took the money. Uh, BTIF, I was in and out of. The uh, only thing I really bought last week was Sphere that I'm holding on to. Um, but yeah, good week overall. I, I guess I've just been sitting on all that for a while, and they, they finally grew. So um, casting the net and waiting was has really paid off probably the last month and a half for me. Um, with um, with Hawaii, what what I thought, was going to happen. And this is why I bought the strike. I did, uh, I had six C 2025, you know, it's a lot, you know, I still, I didn't really feel like timing it. I didn't have a share position, but, but that, you know, that's what I had. And so that's kind of what I thought that we're going to get into the six to eight range. Um, but it just sort of shows that because this isn't the first time this has happened with us, but if you, you just get a position in a good spot <laughs> with a company that, is down but is it really going to go away good things can happen so um that yeah that was pretty incredible yeah to see that news drop it's, um for me just kind of i guess i don't really review much but fine to hear a little bit um for me it, the the news came out like you know we're buying these on we're buying it monday morning um when i woke up we were right around 14 uh, that 1295 line i didn't put on there over the weekend that's been on there for quite some time <laughs> um but then the, as I'm reading the news Monday morning, um, it starts going through, you know, this is just like an offer. We still got to do the vote. We got to get approval, you know, stuff, monopoly stuff starts coming into play. And I'm like, well, we just might as well just take this money. You know, why, why hang out? Um, we've seen what happened with Twitter. It'll offer another entry. It may only be 10. Um, but, but that's the stuff you got to do when you're, you got to kind of rework your thesis because when I talked Sunday afternoon, when the news came in and, um, even to a couple close friends of mine that are also in the position. Um, it was like, we're just going to sell this to 18 for Alaska. You know, that's what we're doing. We're waiting until 18 in Alaska. And that changed literally 40 minutes into the day on Monday because of the, the whole process that you start reading about how it's actually going to play out. Um, so, yeah, and, and, 12, um, 1295 you know, held. This... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you've got the, the save JetBlue. <laughs> yeah, still going on. So, yeah, those mergers can go on and on. Um, definitely. No, and if you were like late to Hawaii, and I try to say that instead of pouting, I, that's what I would have went and done is tried to find the sympathy for it. I mean, that's the first thing you do is go look for what else this might help. Um, I I post I didn't buy it and I should have, but it was a great day to buy Alaska Monday. Great day because they basically got a big pullback for spending money that they hadn't spent yet. Um, and, uh, well, so Southwest Airlines, they had a huge week. Um, so, so I mean, they're, the airlines, yeah, JetBlue too. Yeah. So um, there was definitely that. <clears throat> and, and we talk about, you know, sympathies all the time and which ones work and why and, you know, all that uh, big part of our, our sector focus. Yeah. And it's not like, I mean, if you were lucky, you were on airlines a month ago. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> right. I mean, that was one of the top. What what did I say? Casinos, airlines, and um, burgers. I think. I think it was that what it was. But that was yeah. Well, we did October. we did a list. Yeah, we did a list. We did that top ten, and we're not just like screwing around with the timing on that. I mean, it's like these are gonna be ready. Uh, you know, I don't have anything imminent, but here's where they sit right now. You want a piece? You grab a couple of these. Those weren't weekly contracts if you're doing options. So yeah, um, I mean, yeah, you were. To the little, to the little uncorn. I mean, ain't no one said four sixty. Go, go find them. I'll, I'll PayPal them some cash. You, you just show me the timestamp. Yeah, I'll PayPal them the cash. Um, and no one was talking September to January either. Um, and I'll say the same thing that kind of caught me off guard last time, like because I was about buying the dip, you know, about around the first of the year, that five year Tesla position, right? Um, the the yeah, these, these moves are faster than I'm anticipating. Like we done had our dip and we're headed back north again, right? Like I thought we would have maybe a month and a half, maybe two months of a dip. And we had like a week, a week and maybe two weeks of, of bottom, you know, like it didn't really hang out down there much this time at all. And I'm talking, I mean, you just named the chart. Um, and most of those bottoms were higher lows. So now we're looking for higher highs. I mean, what are we doing here? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean the, um, I, uh, I said maybe it was like a week and a half ago. I was like, yeah, co- coin around 120. It's you know, it's trying to build something there and options. It tapped 120 for about five minutes, and it's now 146. You know, a week later, it hasn't really dipped again. I mean, it made a brief dip back down to 130 or whatever. But but that's kind of how it's it's going to be for a lot of these. Um, and it's not just a crypto thing. Um, Roku is kind of the same way. But a bunch of these charts that. Uh, <clears throat> they had this really aggressive gap down to get to where we'd been trading them for, you know, 18 months or whatever. Uh, but they get back into that gap on the way up. They can move through it just as quickly as they went down. So uh, I'm, I'm seeing that's a big theme and, you know, continuing to look at that. Really looking forward to the next session because I have a lot, a lot to talk about there. Did but you, uh, uh, did you catch read the room? Yeah. Did you catch read the room this week? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was one. I'm not mentioning yep. it here because it's. I think we're real early. I don't want to give it away. But there's a sector I totally was like, this is where it's at for what you just explained perfectly. Um, yeah, I can't yeah. wait to get into those. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait to get into those because you've already yeah. it's kind of already been proven to a point, in my opinion. And there's a lot of them left. So I think so. Psychologically, I think what you have to um, you have to do is, I mean, for me personally, like. The getting out of this mode where where it's like I want to call the top on this. I want to call the top on spy. I want to call the top on QQQ or whichever shit co or whatever you know. Like that that approach is not working. It hasn't worked for people really all year, and it's it's like it's getting the higher we go now, it's getting worse um, in terms of their their callouts or you know or whatever. Um, you find something strong that has a bad day, pull it down to a level that you can reasonably trust and you go long. I mean, you're going to do much better doing that. And, um, and that's, you know, this, this room has more longs than shorts and even did during some of the, um, some of the bad times. It's hard to short stocks. It really is. And uh, I just think the mentality of this stuff's run hot. So it needs to come down. Um, yeah, it's going to pull back, but it's really hard to get the right spot on a lot of that. And it'll just rip right back up on you. So, um, so puts are difficult and I, I really wouldn't usually recommend them. I mean, depending on how many quarters you get, um, how many chances you get, uh, I call top and bottom on spy and I don't even trade the damn thing. Um, I mean, I called a couple things, don't get me wrong, but if you get like in unlimited chances, like your yeah. Mr. Investment guy over there, um, totally, I could go timestamp this 411 and I totally could find a timestamp for 460. So like, yeah, like it's trying to call a top and a bottom is wasting your time. Trying to find useful information along the way to trade is way more important. And if I was a spy trader, I'm not a spy trader. My Twitter rant on Tuesday should explain why I'm not <laughs> in full detail. Um, but yeah, I'd be playing this line again to what you just said. You know, if, if I just play this 455, I mean, it's my 20 day volume profile. It's pretty, pretty easy last week or so. 
uh, playing off of that level. Um, and if um, and four sixty, four sixty was a good short entry on Friday, uh, in terms of like your intraday and you're gonna do a quick trade. It went four fifty, you know, four sixty to four fifty eight fifty or you know or whatever. But uh, you know, I'm talking like these guys saying the crash. I'm gonna time the crash. I'm gonna buy you know puts f- for January at 4.30, and I'm going to buy them right now. Um, well, even if you did that Friday, 4.60, that great put entry, uh, well, you're red already because it went right back up. So <laughs> and it could just keep doing that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what kind of – I said it like uh, probably a month ago, but this market has taken some punches. Um, it's, it's good at fighting now. So I don't know what catalyst you're going to have yeah. that's going to like drag it down. And even if it does, I think it will be quicker than this COVID dip, which was like a month, month and a half. Um, not as dramatic and quicker. So, I mean, I just, I don't want to throw out negative things, but we fought through a lot of that negative stuff. A lot of the stuff in the, in the windshield now is positive. Um, we're going to have an election year. Change is always good. Uh, gas prices are going the right way. Inflation numbers look great. I can't wait for the CPI, PPI this week. If that continues, I don't think you can stop this train. That's a totally another conversation. Um, but yeah, yeah, it just we're kind of looking like we're on the horizon now. Um, and, and everyday people in their life are feeling it, I think, as well. Like my, my gas is finally back. I got a three at the front finally. And, you know, the shopping cart's a little bit cheaper, so... No, I, I agree. Uh, and I think... If you're trying to time a black swan, you got to look up the definition of a black swan because you can't really, the whole idea there, it's not on the calendar. It's not, it's not, you know, uh, uh, an FOMC meeting is not going to be a black swan. It's not, you know, any kind of uh, inflation number or something. Uh, And so I think if you, if you do want to, if you want to go short to me, what you do is, Obviously, you want to buy puts at resistance. That's one thing. Uh, but it's actually the if a stock of a company is having an event that's a positive event, selling the news on a positive event actually does work pretty well. Uh, Tesla with the Cybertruck is a good example. You had three or four sustained days of a pullback on that, uh, and and that's kind of, that's kind of where you have to have to look because it, it is it's difficult to find true weakness right now Um, you read the earnings reports and you watch the reactions to it the the stocks that pull back initially on earnings they're headed they're headed right back up market's very forgiving lululemon's a good example uh pretty much all the SaaS names are you know they come they come right back so um hard to short them through those events the downside doesn't really last even to market open so um yeah it's just a rough time for uh, for bears. And I think the problem is if someone's been bearish, now they feel like it's too late to be bullish. So uh, that's kind of the wrong mentality too. There's always sectors that are lagging, names that are lagging, you know, stuff like that. So it's not all or nothing in terms of bullish bearish either. Now, I'll, I'll definitely let people know when it changes, but um, I, I, I've watched a, a lot of level two. I mean, that's just where I feel safest at and in intraday finding things and, and seeing the actual yeah. movement. Um, there's not sellers. There's just not a lot of sellers. And even around the ER events to kind of you know, bounce off what you said, um, the ones that are selling are probably up pretty good in profit, more of a short term trade or just the run up traders like we are. Um, but that gets bought up so quick. And that, that volatility is what you want to trade. Um, the only negative right now in that is normally a good ER report you'll get, even if you get a dip, you just get good volume for a week or two. Um, and we're only getting good volume for like a day or two, and then it's back to normal volume. So you get like this low volume melt up, but there's no sellers. Um, so when we either get back to where we drop from or we do get to a level, and this this goes for something that runs without ER, where we just get to a level, you start getting this low volume melt up into just sideways continuation. Um, and it's just our sideways consolidation. Sorry. And we just consolidate because there's not yeah. enough volume to really break through a level. Um, 
and I like those plays. Um, I don't really want to drop the name, but I will. PCT right now. Like, I don't care where you buy it at. It's going to take you to five. Yeah. But it ain't going past five. And that's just, you, you kind of learn right, that, right. that psychology about stocks um, and, and take your money off of them. But if you just got to understand like everything right now, I mean, it's hard to trade. That's why I think spy traders are going to get just throttled for a while and have gotten throttled is because the volume is so low everywhere else. It can't really be that high there. Um, yeah. Um, I do have a couple of uh, uh, things in futures I want to talk about really quickly. Go for it. And uh, first of all, um, so oil. <laughs> again, I um, I think you're there's still plenty of time for entries on oil. I think we're getting pretty close. Um, this has not broken below the kind of danger zone to me, which is 68 to 71 right now had, you know, kind of had a good Friday um, looking for it to, uh, to build there. I, um, I think you like to me that interestingly, the most appealing names um, are the biggest ones, the oxy Exxon, etc., And then the smallest ones. Uh, I won't, we don't get into a lot of individual tickers here, but, um, but there are, um, you know, there's, there's some opportunities in oil, uh, but you know, some of the mid caps to me are still a little shaky, the Devons and, and all them. So, um, so I think we're, we're early there. I'd expect oil though, um, to start to, to build something here, um, should have a pretty good, good week. And then, um, uh, China. So you've got Hang Seng just really getting pummeled constantly, but a lot of the, the individual names, um, are holding up yeah. pretty well. And uh, this is going to be kind of like a beach ball underwater. Uh, you're going to get some really explosive moves in Chinese stocks, I think, January through March. So if you have some names you like there, um, might want to start thinking about uh, thinking about grabbing something. And uh, then um, uranium. Uh, uranium is still very, very, very strong. Uh, and there's actually uh, some pretty good entries and names there, so I would uh, continue to look to look at that uranium eighty two seventy five right now. Easily could get into the nineties here within a few weeks, so um, I would stay on that too. Okay. Oh, uh, not to backtrack, but I wanted to make this point, and I should have just said it with the last stuff, but it kind of fits with that as well. Um, the election year stuff, and I I pointed to it. A little bit ago but i want to double down on it like um the fuckers losing and i don't see red versus blue i really see like globalist establishment versus populist i mean that's kind of what we got going on right now but um to that doesn't really matter the fuckers that are in charge right now are gonna make it nice for us so we vote for them simple as that so we're gonna get cheaper prices throughout the year maybe maybe we will, they will force a couple of the rate cuts early um that I just think is our catalyst looking forward. I wanted to get that out there. I wanted to have that recorded. Um, and I uh, think, I think yeah. that's, that's what's kind of holding <laughs> down oil. And then when you say China too, a peace deal with China, like any kind of like handshake with China, Biden, you know, yada, yada, meet in Hawaii or some shit. I don't know. Anything like that, though, this next yeah. what, 12 months is going to move the market, especially those wealth. So, I mean, we're kind of set up for that. Like they have to be nice. Because they want your vote, and not to not to get politically and but. Um, and on the you know the the individual names the you get the four dollar Chinese stocks going to be seven dollars. Yeah, that's what they do. Um, so we'll we'll be on that and, and we'll have some some setups there for that. Um, one point I had I would mention hopefully just sparks a little conversation. We're doing good here on time. We got ten still. Um, because we we talked about it. And then we proved it, and we always say that happens, and then, you know, six or seven of them happen, and then people finally start asking. So I'm trying to stay ahead of that. Um, but $2 stocks, man, they move like options. If they're $2 or less, you'd probably go up to five even, to be honest with you. 10% um, versus 25% on the stop loss, just in general, right? You can get away with a shorter stop loss than you can with an option play. Uh, you got to have more room on an option play. Uh, no time frame. 
you can hold it for three months and it might not change prices. Show me an option you can do that with. If you did, the professor found it for sure. <laughs> the professor found that one for sure. And um, you can scale in and out a little bit easier, right? Like you can't really buy the same option contract this week and then buy the same one next week. You got to go to a different option. So your familiarity with what's going on is just like it's you're doing a project for a week and then you find another project and you're doing that project for a week. And it's just hard to kind of see the similarities in the project you're working on. So more of a long-term project for you and getting filled. You can actually get your fill. You'll get your full position. Um, it, it won't just slam you in or out of it um, if you use OCLs. So yeah, I wonder how you feel about them $2 stocks that move like options. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of that. And, and actually, you know, I, I use the options to read those, uh, but I do prefer, I prefer the, prefer the shares. Uh, and I'm kind of getting that way, even up to the 16 to $18. <laughs> those are my favorite stocks. Um, uh, you know, the ones that, uh, you know, that go 16 to 18 or sometimes go 16 to 20 plus the lemonades and, you know, and all them. And, uh, you know, because the, so the thing, the thing about the shares is, um, it just, it takes so much of less mental capital to keep up with them because, you know, I'm, I do like to trade options. I like to trade options where, you know, the option is the trade like that. It's an options trade the stocks kind of built that way. It's AVGO or it's you know UNH or you know whatever. Um, there's a lot to keep track of when you're in those kind of trades, and you know for me with all the work that we put in, I want to get a piece of the work that we're doing myself. And shares are kind of the way to go, you know for for a lot of those. And uh, <laughs> you know if if um, if 10, 15 percent, 18 percent isn't enough for you in a trade then um something going on with you know the the sizing's not right i mean it you know so you need to get to a point in your account size where that is enough because if you're going to consistently make it it's it's the eight 14 percent trades that that's what you're built on uh, you're not going to build yourself on thousand percent trades that's just i mean those are fun um you can't you can't size up with those because the by getting a win that big uh, that says something about the risk of that position that you're in and what's your you know what's your comfort zone you put ten thousand dollars in something that half of it can be gone in two seconds i don't think i'll ever be in that position i wouldn't want to be uh, so yeah, I mean, I think you have to you have to start looking share side, and uh, there's a reason we put so much work into the hot list, and there's a reason the hot list is dominated by stocks at a certain price point uh, because they're the safest and uh, most consistently profitable setups. Yeah, except for that one that's a thousand bucks this week. Sorry about that. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no. I, <laughs> hey, I'm, ex I'm ex I love it when uh, one of mine shows up and you're you're in. That's, um, uh, so I want. We always about. talk about like uh, we're we're baseball guys. Um, yeah. Just in general, that's our, our go to analogy. But we always talk talking about batting average, right? And I'm I'm a 70, 80 percent guy, and I kind of stress that. Um, but I think people don't get the other side of that. And you just kind of covered it. Like those are eight to fifteen percent trades, like most of them, right? You occasionally you get the home run, like um, so. It's like a an eighty percent with a ten percent um, or single average, right? It's not like a lot. What I think a lot of people on Twitter are doing, they're they're th they're three out of ten, but their three is like you know five to seven to a thousand percent. So it kind of get some maybe back to even or just shortly low, depending on how yeah. much money they need to withdraw. But you, you got to go the other way. I mean, that's where the all close all trades green and tell me when you've lost comes in. Um, but when I started thinking about that, what really pointed out to me, and I don't like to admit it to myself because I kind of like keep it away. If there's also of like, how much should I have taken from those trades, right? That's also mm -hmm. probably 
20 or 30 percent of the total moves on average to be honest with you um i'm not yeah. getting like 50 half the move most of the time or 70 or 80 or 100 percent of the move i'm usually out way before that happens um in, in most things and now the stocks that i like long term yeah. that changes a little bit but anything that's like a i consider a day trade like i may be 20 i think 30 percent's nice but 20 30 percent of the the range of the trade is actually what you get and i think no one talks about that uh yeah ab absolutely and <laughs> so i think that's where like when we say stay on these winners um I mean, really, yes, I, I could have just bought coin once or MSTR. could have just bought it once, never needed to go back. Uh, but I didn't keep it that long because, I don't know, look at the chart. <laughs> look at the last time coin, coin went to 100. Did you buy would have kept through all that. Did you buy coin um, at, at the, 70, the 72, 76 area? Like shares? Did, yeah. Shares? Yes, okay. shares. Do you still have um, them? And... No. Uh, so so where, where, I... where'd you get out at? Yeah, let's do this real quick. So I I sold it was um it was right before the last high. So that um it was yeah, like 108. Oh jeez. So was I was out at I, nine, I was out I at out. like ninety two the last of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh and that and then and then it's been options only, but it's been very good. Um I I had like a swing on coin options that went like five hundred percent. I only had like four of them, but uh, but still, I mean, that that's kind of been where I've been with that. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, uh, so I think that, you know, staying on those winners, um, I I mean, honestly, I actually, I work, kind of worked through my whole psychology here with you on Roku, yeah, where same it was thing, like, right? man, I just, I just want, you know, I just like, would love to keep some of this, but, you know, it's just kind of hard. Um, it's But, but honestly, like that, whole process me sort of working through that kind of prevented me from just being like just clear out what you had and let's see what it does up here and see if it builds some strength you know it did it. and and we go back yeah and we go back and you can always go back and uh, i think that um <clears throat> it's like what what got you into the trade right is you know was were you got getting into this trade planning to hold this stock for a really long time if you bought snow in the 130s or something like that um you know if you bought pan w at some of the dips that we had those stocks that you can keep for you know five years ten years whatever like nvidia for you you know a couple others if, if that was your mentality going into it keeping it makes sense if it was a trade and it's just a trade that went way better than you anticipated i think you still look for the exit and, and understand that you can, um, that you can buy back in the free, free, that, shares, yeah, um, free shares at most there. hundred percent. I'm with you. Yeah, exactly. You don't yeah. turn a day trade into a long term or, yeah. or I have to put it in a spot <clears throat> where you over manage it. <clears throat> and I would root Roku definitely was on the top of my mind there. So I'm glad you brought that up. Um, what I want to say to you now, this yeah. one's for, this one's for you definitely is like with coin, um, I could be like, oh, dang, Professor got an extra, what, 16 bucks out of it than I did. I took my coin money to CLSK. And that's just how it's, you got to have that forward looking, like, what did I miss managing this trade? And for me, I know what I would have missed if I would have stayed on coin. I wouldn't have went and focused on CLSK. Um, so that's just a, I don't know. That's so that was I've one. And then um, done that. I, I did that with MSTR and BitFarm. Yeah. So exactly. It's like M MSTR. It's like, I mean, even, even if I talk about how like, yeah, I, I read expensive stuff, but I mean, holy shit, MSTR options are getting pricey mm -hmm. to where your weekly in the money is like 1500 bucks. So it's like, yeah, this is getting a little trickier up here. Um, and it was just because, uh, you know, my thesis on it was right. And here we are at 600 bucks. But, um, but yeah, I, I think for me taking that, profit going into to bit farm at, i think i was like 128 um worked beautifully and uh so yeah i'm, I'm with you on that that well, idea and as well. even even just adjusting sizing probably needs to be done after the initial trade pans out 
And you're not doing that if you're staying in, right? Like yeah. You're not resizing, yeah. especially on the option side. Um, that, that whole conversation right there really fit that orange analogy I had a few sessions ago um, where, you know, you squeeze it and you squeeze it and it keeps giving you juice, but there's there is other oranges out there that probably are ready to give juice. So um, that's and that's the hard part exactly. of trading, not finding these setups. I mean, these just take work. You just got to, you know, get a little elbow grease. It's managing the setups. It's managing which ones to put your money into, which ones to pay attention to, which ones to get in and out of, how long to stay. Um, and I think that's even amplified on your side. So, so um, I want to, <laughs> before we get to spy, I want to break down something because this was actually, it was almost more of like a TA read than, I mean, the flow was good. But when I said on Thursday morning, I was like, oh, uh, yeah. I think AMD is going to do something yeah, today. You like that, don't you? And I just want to, <laughs> I want to walk through the reason. The, the, want to walk through the reason I, I said that. So um, I'm up for pre market, regardless. Uh, my sleep schedule is all jacked up right now, anyway. But so when I when I got up and it's it's like you know four in the morning here, and I saw AMD had this pre pre market spike. It's like one, you know, it was like one eighteen to one twenty one. Um, and then it pulled back and then it starts working its way up again. Um, I, you know, because I saw 124, 125 C weeklies are, were, were solid. And because it had that spike, pull back, move back up pre-market, I was like, I think this is just going to take off. And so for me, me, my, the way I say things, when I say, I think this is going to do something, it's kind of like holy shit, the stock's going to pop off huge. I mean, that, that's what I would say if I were one of those mop head kids. But I was, you know, I was pretty <laughs> bullish on it. So, like, I want to, from your end, is what I, what I was seeing there, is that is that something that, that you know, you look for? That I mean, what, what do you think was happening pre-market there? For, for a stock like that to have that kind of range being indicative of something happening, once we open, um, it might be the one thing that if I was going to be like cr critical or not really critical, but like giving you your next year homework, right? It's that morning news. Yeah. Because that's what that was. Then the same with the Broadcom, the same thing that's going to go on there is um, there was just a lot of good semi news mm -hmm. this morning and they had, I forget who it was with, but it was AI related that they had a, a semiconductor that was pretty much proprietary to them for something that all three of the big boys needed apple google microsoft they all needed for ai um and that was the news from a chart standpoint yeah we hit this 20-day volume profile tight consolidation there's nowhere else to go but up here when i see this p rtl is a beautiful thing these blue lines are there for a reason um secondary moves are safer <laughs> i mean it's just everything i say was there and so um, and that's, that's something I want to start doing more is, is, I mean, you only drop like three plays in the morning. I can go check them out from a chart standpoint. And, and if I agree with one, I'll, I'll say what I say, you know, like, um, and that one just, that just felt like a good time to say, to double stamp something that you were doing. Um, I didn't think we would get yeah, probably yeah, cool. past the, I didn't think we'd get past, you know, back in here, 25. So the continuation on Friday was kind of. Nice to see, but I think I think from an option trade, you were out on that first, on the second hour candle. You're probably done with that trade. So. The yeah, it was the 125 C yeah uh, weeklies. That was what I, that was what I got, and yeah. I just got out like here when it moved above that. Yep. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and yeah I mean yeah. that's that's like 300 percent. If that's not good enough for you, I don't know what I don't say. <laughs> <But> <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I don't know, 300 to 300 percent, I'll say it, 300 of, of 20 bucks is only 60 bucks, so 300% uh, of 20 bucks is only 60 bucks, that ain't enough for these guys, that's their pro that's Twitter's problem, is the sizing ain't enough for the percentage, yeah, yeah. that's Twitter's problem, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's get to some spy action, um, and yeah, let's do that more, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm definitely doing it, um, when I see, like again, you drop three in the morning, um, when I see the no-brainers i'm definitely going to say something um uh yeah I, I mean anyone who was paying attention to abgo too um that works i mean when you when you pop when you commented on that one 
I was like, okay, I, I definitely have something here now. Um, you know, cause it was, uh, if it lines up on your end for a, a stock is nine, if you're going to mention a stock that's 900 bucks, then, uh, we're in good shape. Well, it's that, that it's, again, it's that what I just kind of critiqued you on a little bit. It has, well, and we'll talk about it when we get there, but it has the news right now. It has everything. Everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, spy. Let's do it and get to work. Look at this consolidation up here. Yep. That's maybe like two and a half weeks. Um, I'm going to let you talk strikes because I think that's going to dictate a lot of things. Yes. So it's. I've been, um, you know, it was it was puts that offered the read for you know all of October, and then when those puts flipped bullish, uh, which just means that I mean, means two things: they're selling to close, so they made their money and they're leaving, um, or more importantly, they're selling to open to all the retail saps who just think we're you know we have to pull back, and um, and they just keep just crushing them. Those, those puts keep going to zero and they just walk it, um, you know, all the way up. So we're still kind of in that, in that mode. Um, and right now what I'm seeing, um, I got sold puts at <laughs> 459, 458, um, early in the week, some at 460, 460 is a little more, a little more mixed. But um, as far as like a, you know, a pullback goes, I don't even think 450 is very likely this week. Uh, maybe 455 is probably about, about it. Um, the longer term, longer range puts are uh, not looking particularly bearish either. Um, you look at like 1215. Um there's a little bit of like 435 there, but um, I mean that contract's down to 10 bucks, so I don't know that they're gonna be able to do much with uh, with that. Now that said, on the call side, I don't I don't have a lot either. I've got like 462 or something, so it's I mean it's looking a little tight this week to me is what I would say, and uh, <laughs> so I'm not sure how. Explosive the move will be, but yeah, four fifty five is about my floor. Um, I got I got to run that back. You um four fifty four forty six. You missed the bottom by fifteen cents, and four sixty two fifteen. You missed the top by a dollar eighty five. <laughs> I was on both sides. I was wider than you, um, but just didn't get the pop. Is yeah, what it seems like. But yeah, um, you had tight last week. I'm I'm I, I this four this changed by a penny. So I'm 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 gonna stay with that on the bottom. Um, this 455, especially since you said it about seven times, um, 455 yeah. does seem like the floor, <laughs> um, good, probably a good time to buy the, the callers for the, your day traders. I mean, that's, I would have that line on your chart for sure. Somewhere in that 455 area, the top I mean, we just keep walking up here Let me pull the other chart. Do we, I mean, we keep tight and walking up here. It's kind of what it seems like. Um, these are six or seven dollar candles, so if we put seven dollars on fifty five, that's sixty two. So we'll go sixty three because I'm a bull, and I need some change. Let's go. I got 08. I'm gonna go twenty four. Just just like that number this week. So sixty three twenty four, um, fifty five oh eight. I I'm with you, and I'm still mindful that we're gonna go into the holidays here soon, and those people that are comfy and cozy and have money and and don't want to worry about it are going to eventually walk away and volume's going to get a little worse than it already is um, for a few days. Um, whether that's this week or next week, um, just be re I'm ready for it. Oh, so, uh, 462.20. So a little below you there. And... I will go 454.73. A little bit of a dipper. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, so just tight again. Tradable. The, the thing about that is for me, though, P, there's plenty of other. I mean, that's when the news kind of comes in, or sectors come in, because that's where the trades will be. 
like crypto. Uh, yes, yeah. I, weeks. I think um, uh, spy is going to get really tricky uh, to trade, and you know you'd better have. <laughs> it's not a time for random entries. Uh, you better have a pretty good idea of the level that you're buying. Uh, a dramatic up thesis or down thesis. I don't think it's a good week to enter that. No, that's where those um, overbought, oversold, or imbalanced traders actually do well in this kind of a market. Because uh, they at least have a plan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you ready, to get, you ready to get to work? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Grab.